Hey, what's happening everybody? Today I'm going to show you how you can create your own file geo databases with feature classes inside them within your ArcGIS Pro project. So, first thing what I want to do is between analysis and edit, I want to click on view. And just below the view button, I have catalog pane. If I open that up, I can see all the associated collateral with my ArcGIS Pro project, such as maps, toolboxes, databases, to see a list of existing databases connected to this ArcGIS Pro project, I can expand the databases folder here and I can see every Pro project comes with its own default geo database. You can use that one if you wish or if you want to create your own, we can right click databases here and we have a few different options. The one we can choose is new file geo database. We can give it a name, bearing in mind no spaces, no special characters and I can select a save location for it. So whether I want to save it in my downloads or if I'm working with an organization that has servers set up, I can save it there as well. Once I hit save, you can see here that it pops up straight away. Now if I expand it, there's nothing in it, right? So I have an Atom file geo database uh, sitting within my databases folder with nothing in it. To get a feature class added to this, I can right click the geo database click on new I have a few different options but the one I'm interested in is a feature class not a feature data set most people get confused with this but a feature class I can give it a name say Adam polygon bearing in mind my name can't have any spaces or special characters but my aliases can so I can say Adam polygon and it has a space very useful if I'm publishing to you know this this feature class if I'm if the end result is to publish it to ArcGIS online uh, it might make sense to have to give it an alias so it appears more kind of user readable when it is in ArcGIS online or people are interacting with it in ArcGIS Pro the next option I have is feature class type so we have a few different ones here let's not try and get bogged down too much in each one means I would say a vast majority of GIS data sets out there are either polygon lines or points. So I'm going to choose polygon here. Geometric properties, I don't need to worry too much about it. If I do want to do any kind of 3D modeling in future, you know, it could be worthwhile um, to enable Z values. I can add the output data set to current map as well. Now, bear in mind, there's six pages here. The first three are the most important. The second page is all the fields that I have. So if I want to put in, you know, field notes or whatever it is, it's going to be a text. Okay, this is where I configure it. And I say, oh, this is going to be a number field of some sort. I can click enter and then I can double left click. And I have different options here. Short integers, long integers, floats, doubles. Uh, if you're dealing with decimals, floats are always good big numbers floats will handle just about anything and you can see here for each field I have field properties so I can say that this is an alias again the same rule applies that if I don't want to put spaces in my field name I can put in an alias here I can allow no values and I can assign uh, default values domains we'll probably cover in another video it's if you want to have a drop down list as people are editing and creating data right but nothing to worry about if we just add our fields that we want here you can click next the third page uh, is all about coordinate systems then so you can select from your favorites so you can see here I work primarily with org Irish and uh, UK organizations so we're using Earnet, Irish Transverse Mercator, Irish National Grid but a good rule of thumb is WGS84 if I'm working with kind of latitude and longitude or if I'm working in ArcGIS online I can choose WGS 1984. Uh, if you don't know what coordinate system to use, I would recommend WGS 1984 Web Mercator because it's the same one that ArcGIS Online uses. So if you're not too worried about coordinate systems, this is the one to work for. If you don't have the same um, options that I have on my screen, you can of course search as well uh, and then we can go in to Geographic Coordinate Systems World we can see WGS84 or we can go into projected coordinate systems uh, world again and we can see all the ones that we want to choose WGS1984 World Mercator is there uh, and there's a few other ones um, 
but we won't get bogged down too much in the video. We do need a coordinate system. We do need to choose one if we want to display our data on a map. And if you don't know it, like I said, WGS 1984 Web Mercator is a good one because it's the same coordinate system that the base map uses in ArcGIS Online. The rest, page 4, page 5, page 6, I 95% of the time I leave it as default. They're very kind of niche tools. If you want to set them up, we can. But if I hit finish now, you can see that I have Atom Polygon added to my map. I have it added to my geo database, and now I can start going in and maybe, you know, drawing my um, drawing my polygons. Okay, and that's how I get a feature class within a file geo database, a new one within my pro projects.